Hello and welcome to lesson 4 of Shopify GA4 crash course. In this video we will do 8 important GA4 settings. I will walk you through one by one and we will do it together as always. They will increase the data quality in your reports and also some of them such as referral exclusion will make some reports much more meaningful compared to before. So without further ado let's get started and let me show you which settings we are talking about. We will do referral exclusion, Google signals and then search console and Google ads integrations. UTM settings, even though UTMs are not inside of GA4, still GA4 is the one who which receives the data. And more often than not, I see Shopify merchants are making crucial mistakes with the UTMs, so I wanted to touch base into that too. We will disable default form interactions, which you might remember from the previous videos. We will adjust sessions timeout and timeout for engagement sessions. GA4 default settings for sessions are pretty low, so we want to increase them a little bit. And then we will also filter out internal traffic so that your or your team's visits in GA4 will not be counted as normal visits because you know you will spend much more time in your website compared to a regular user and if you don't filter out the internal traffic then all your reports might be interrupted. So let's now go into GA4. In this tutorial I will be guided by Shopify GA4 guidebook that we created on Analyzify website. To follow with me easily just google Shopify GA4 guidebook, hit enter and then our article will come. In this article of course all the information is important but specifically this 8 important GA4 settings for Shopify merchants. Just click into that. Now this will show one by one everything that I will be doing with you. So for those who don't like videos, who likes to do the things screen by screen, side by side, you can follow through the article or if you want to send to your colleagues just you can send this link so that they can follow along with you. But now let's get started. So the first thing we will do is the referral exclusions. What are referral exclusions? Referral exclusions use case is usually payment gateways on Shopify. For instance somebody visits your website coming from a Facebook ad. In that very moment they chose PayPal as a payment option. So they are redirected to PayPal. They complete the payment and they come back. So if you don't set referral exclusions properly, this PayPal will be counted as referral and it will be seen on your reports as PayPal referral. So this is pretty common problem on Shopify when you check the acquisition reports, you see referrals, you see the payment referrals. So what we should be doing, we have prepared a list for Shopify merchants here. These are the known payment providers and of course you can add your own. We should add these to referrals one by one so that Google Analytics will ignore these referrals that the first actual referral of the purchase will be counted. What we will be doing now, we will just go to Google Analytics for, let me just start from the beginning, click admin on the left bottom corner and then find data streams. Choose the data stream you created earlier. Click configure tag settings. And then here click show all and here we have list unwanted referrals. Let's click into that. Now we need to add them one by one. I'll just do it very fastly. This, this setting is fine, match type, so referral domain contains. If it contains shop.app, for example, this is the most common referral. Maybe if you check your traffic reports, you will see this referral exclusions error. Already you will see a lot of sales from shop.app maybe. So shop, app, PayPal, Stripe, they all should be added here. Let me do it quickly. So I didn't add them all, but I just added a couple important ones. Again, if you have some other payment providers rather than these ones, you could add them yourself. As you can see here, we, as we use the referral domain contains rule, we were a little bit careful. You, you don't need to write the full domain. But when you write Klarna, if domain contains Klarna, that will be ignored as referral. Be careful with Google. If you just type google.com here, that will be horrible for you. But if you write pay.google.com, that's Google's payments URL already. So now if I save it, I, am, I already saved the unwanted referrals, so Google will no longer count them as referrals. As we are here, you could also fastly configure your domains. This is also good to do. So if you just click Add Condition, just type your domain here. And I would also recommend you to type 
uh, myshopify.com URL that your store has because sometimes for some reason Shopify sends traffic to from that specific domain so that Google recognizes, Google Analytics recognizes that this is your own domain. If you own another domain which is connected to your store, then you feel free to add that domain here and save it. Now we did the first setting which are referral exclusion. And as you can see here, this, tut this tutorial can be found on this page. I would strongly recommend you to follow these tutorials from our website because Again, we can update the website as they go. Maybe things will change. Maybe we will enhance this list. So by the time I'm recording this video, um, the, this, this might not be the most up-to-date information as you are watching now. That's why make sure to check our Shopify G8 for guidebook and follow the updates. Now let's go to the second setting, enable Google Signal. This is pretty straightforward. I will just go back and as we are there, I will also try to explain you what Google Signals is. When we are here, we should just click data settings, data collection, and then you see Google Signals data collection. Click get started, activate Google Signals. This will enable some cross device capabilities, more insights using Google data and all existing advertising features. Let me quickly explain you, you know, for instance, I am logged in now as uh, with my email on this device. If I visit your website, and if your Google Signals is activated, Google use the logged in user data and enable it in your analytics report. So you will know for this specific user more demographic information. Another thing will be that I might be using my mobile phone. I might log into your store from my mobile and then come and purchase from my desktop. As I am logged into Google in both devices, then Google will still attribute that user. So Google Signals is pretty powerful. So Google Signals is pretty powerful. Make sure to activate Google Signals. It's pretty just a couple of clicks. Now I have already done it and it has been activated. Now let's go to number three integrate with search console and google ads this is so important again i see many merchants are not doing it it's in the same place under product links google ads links and you can also link merchant center but what i'm talking now is search console and google ads links why because your store receives so much data from google organic and google ads once you link these properties the pro data sharing between the properties will be enabled. GA4 will send the data to Search Console and Google Ads, vice versa. This is really good because then SEO reports will be enabled in your Google Analytics 4 and also Google Ads reports will be enabled in Google Analytics 4. And additionally, in Google Ads, you will have importing audiences, importing conversions, some engagement metrics. So you will enhance both platforms once you link these two. I will not do this, it's pretty straightforward. You just click and Google leads you with the link option. I don't want to take more time from this video with this simple thing. I'll just move to the next. But again, you can see the tutorial here easily. Now let's talk about UTMs. So all your external links should have UTM parameters. I have an in-depth tutorial about this topic. If you just type Google Shopify UTM Facebook, the first result will be our website. Here I explain more in depth what UTMs is, how it is used, etc. And then we also have a YouTube video about the same topic. You can also watch that YouTube video for further information. But simply speaking, external links having UTM parameters, for example, let's say you will run ads on Facebook. If you just type analyzify.com, and when that comes into Google Analytics, Google Analytics will recognize that traffic as a referral from Facebook, probably a social traffic. But if you add the UTM parameters correctly, and if you include your ad name, campaign name, maybe even an ad set name and so on, then Google Analytics will know exactly which ad, which campaign, which ad ID brought this. For Facebook ads and Instagram ads, there is a dynamic parameter, dynamic UTM parameter, which you can copy and paste to all your ads. And Google Analytics will show the campaign reports clearly even for Facebook ads. So that's what is about UTM settings. You can copy this code and use in your ads. It will work perfectly fine. This is for Facebook ads, for Pinterest, for Linkpop, and all the other external traffic sources. You should be adding this manually. Now let's go to our next task. Disable GA Forms built-in form interaction. This was pretty exciting when it came out. We were all like, wow, GA4 will automatically track the forms. But unfortunately, it's not working well, especially for Shopify merchants. Any search box or text input field, GA4 thinks it's a form and it keeps triggering this form submit event. 
What I recommend strongly is just let's just disable it. Go to your data stream setting. Under enhance measurement, just click this setting. And here, disable form interactions. And then click save. What this will do, now GA4 will no longer try to track this. That means less events will be sent to GA4. Those events were already wrong, so it was just messing up your events reports. Now we have cleaned it up and we can go to the next one. Next one is session timeout. In GA4, session reports are quite important um, and by default, sessions are defined as 30 minutes. But as we know in Ecom, our customers take their time to decide, so it's better to set a wider time frame for this. We recommend to make it like 7 hours and 55 minutes. In that case, if somebody clicks an ad and then comes after 4 hours and purchases the product, it will still be counted within the same session. So this is the first thing we want to do. The same place we want to go, we want to go to data streams and then we want to click this. Come here, configure text settings. We will find it under show all and here adjust session time out. We will choose 7.55 which is maximum and the second thing we want to do is timer for engage sessions. So we also want to change this. We just follow this tutorial as you can see. We want to change it to 60 seconds. We can go and 60. So we did that too. Now we are in our last step, which is filtering out internal traffic. It's so important if we don't do this, our reports will be messed up. That's why we should provide our IP address to Google. Not only us, all of our team members or whoever is using your website regularly rather than your clients. And if you have their IP address, you can ask them, of course. Then you should filter out the internal traffic. Let's see where it is done. It says choose data stream and then all tag settings. The same place that we were looking at. And then there is a section called define internal traffic. As you can see here, define internal traffic. When we go there, we just need to create a rule. And let's call this rule as internal traffic Hermann's home. And I just need to do this. I will not do it now because I don't want you to see my IP obviously, but you should, you should just set the IP and then you could either set an IP range or you could set an IP address equals. So for example, if you are working in an office, with a set of IP range, you could then give the IP range. You don't need to give one by one. But if you are working remote, all your team is around, then you have different IP addresses. So you just type IP address equals and then add another one, add another one, and then save this. What will happen once you do this is that your traffic will no longer be counted by Google, by Google Analytics, and as a result, you will not interrupt the reports. So these were the most important top eight settings that you should be doing in the GA4. I hope it was clear and useful. Now in the next video, next lesson, we will be talking about e-commerce reports in GA4. I will navigate you through GA4's interface a little bit and I will try to make you more comfortable in GA4. I hope you will easily find what you are looking for in GA4 after that video as well. If you find this useful, consider signing up for our complete Shopify course, which will be here free on YouTube. Just visit the link below and then make sure to leave your email so that we can keep you posted once we release it. And of course, if you find all this information helpful and if you enjoy our tutorials, you can subscribe to our channel. And one last thing, you can always let us know your questions through the comments. Our team regularly checks them and tries to answer. So we would like to hear your thoughts, how it went for you. Did you make all settings? Did these settings work for you? Is there any other setting that you want to ask to us? You can leave your comments in the description below. That's all for now and see you in the next lesson.